black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Yo, what up? So back with a uh, Coney Classic mukbang. Uh, I did an ASMR of this before where it was my homemade stuff. This is actually a homemade version again. We got the classic crispy fries, the, the Cavendish fries, little onion and ketchup on there. And also, you know what, let's get straight to it. I do have some of that gravy, baby, to go right on the top. Take it to Brown Town and make it nice. The only thing is I'm on a flat cutting board. This gravy came out a little thin. I thought it was gonna be thick with two C's, but uh, turns out it's a little thinner than I had expected and I just don't want it to run everywhere and be up Shits Creek. Do you know what I'm saying? But looks fine. I think we're good there. Of course, we got the Coney Dogs. I got two in the front on some bakery bread that I picked up. Steamed that, as you saw in that little early clip. I tried to show you guys a little bit of the cooking coming together, just a little shot of everything. Uh, I didn't really have time for the rest. But then we have, of course, the grilled off wiener. We got the Coney sauce. We got the nice chopped onion and the mustard. And for dessert in the back, I just ketchup as per usual. So I'm excited to eat. I want to get straight into this. And uh, before I do that, I just actually want to say uh, rest in peace to um, Sassy Snacks, AKA Old Lady ASMR. That's what she started out as. She is an OG or well, is, was. Uh, I can't believe what even happened to her. It's just like, just crazy. It's just not something that happens like through in YouTube. Like you don't, it's a very rare thing. But anyways, um, if you don't know who she is, she was very OG in the community. Uh, she's one of the first, like really the pioneers kind of thing of this whole eating ASMR game. And uh, she was great. She was quirky, had a little attitude. She, you know, funny, like very pretty. And um, I think she was maybe late 30s, maybe 40-ish. And uh, unfortunately, she found herself with cancer that had was too far gone, and uh, she passed away. So it took her in a very short time, and it's just very sad, very unfortunate. And I know that her videos, I got a lot of entertainment, enjoyment, and relaxation, and some sort of like ease from them at a time in my life. So I got to give her a shout out, absolutely. Um, so yeah, if you've never never heard of her maybe go check her channel it's still there i believe and uh yeah maybe just drop and drop your condolences or or what have you if you feel inclined so anyways i just want to hit that up want to get that out of the way um because she deserves it and uh and then eat this of course i gotta go first play it for a dog now the story behind this is my uncle he's originally obviously where i'm originally from and uh, he he lives here where I live, but uh, he also knows all about these Coney dogs from my hometown because he grew up with them as well. And basically... He loves to cook just like me. And uh, he knows of my obsession of wanting to recreate this recipe. And so It's so good. It's like a chili dog, but it's not quite. It's a different, it's a meat sauce. Anyhow, um, him and I always like kind of shoot the shit about it. Like, you know, what what could be it? Could, could be this, could be that, could be what.
So I've tried my batches um, to see how close I can get. And I've gotten pretty close, I'd say. But still something missing. So he randomly surprised me and hit me on the text and was like, I made a batch of my own. with a couple new ideas and tweaks and uh, I'll bring you over a container to try it so that's what this is right now this is me attempting or trying my uncle's version of what what he thinks is going on and I gotta tell you off top, he's doing a pretty good job. There is, he's definitely on, on the mark in a lot of ways. There's a couple, you guys hear this? You hear that dog? You hear that dog? Do you hear that? I hope you can. That dog is my nightmare. I'll get into that in a minute. And God, these fries are good. Holy. You guys, gravy and ketchup. I don't care. It belongs together. Come at me if you want. It just plays exactly how it should with each other. So yeah, whatever he's got going on here is like it's really quite close. Beautiful. There's a, a minor consistency issue in terms of the actual how chunky it is. The flavoring though is pretty on point. But there's still something lacking where like in my recipe, uh, we were, I was just saying like, what do you kind of, we were breaking it down and I, I put cinnamon in mine. He doesn't or didn't in this and I personally think that cinnamon is a crucial plays a crucial factor it's also very important about the bun how you prepare the bun and the wiener that you use too but yeah Shout out to my uncle, doing a good job. On that note, about that dog, there is this little yappy son of a bee. That just pops off at the beak. From the moment its owner leaves at 8 a.m. in the morning to the moment that its owner comes home at whatever time they come home, five, six, whatever it is. This thing is just going off. And the worst part is it doesn't even live, it lives on the fifth floor. So people have deduced because our condo has this group where it's like, you can just write stuff that's you know, of concern or anything else. You can just post it in it, like this is what's happening around the condo, what's up guys? And sometimes when things like this are happening, cause its owner probably doesn't know what it's doing when it's gone, right? Unless it has like a furbo or something like that. But regardless, 
clearly this owner just doesn't know and evidently everybody who lives around this owner must work the exact same hours as them because there's no possible way anybody could live around this dog because i live floors away from this dog and i can hear it loud and clear all day or er day because i work the opposite schedule Now, part of me wants to murder this dog. Part of me knows, well, all of me knows it's not the dog's fault. But when you hear the dog doing the dog thing, I just, you know, my anger goes towards the dog. It, however, shouldn't. It's clearly this, this owner is... To blame. Um, the dog is clearly like terrified or whatever. So uh, apparently, this owner has been found and notified. From what I can tell, uh, still no change has occurred. So my thing is this, two things. Don't move into a pet friendly uh, living quarters where you're tight knit and the walls are, I guess, thin. Move into buildings that are pet, no pet. Because in my experience, a pet building has been nothing but a headache to live in. Uh, and then my other thing would be to this owner, Please just don't have a dog. Like, if your dog, if you can't provide the proper care or whatever for your dog to be looked after, etc., and you have to disappear on it all day, that's not fair to the animal. You're being an ass. And, you know, it's very. inconsiderate to every other person that you live around in a in like an apartment or condo building just like that's just kind of a dick move but I know that's a hard decision to be faced with to find out that your beloved pet yaps all day and is driving everybody else insane. Because there have been multiple posts about this dog. And I know how hard it is to like have a pet and then just be like, oh, I got to give you away or whatever. Or have... It's a tricky situation because then you might have to like spend money on like a kennel or babysitting or whatever. I don't know. Or you got to give your dog away. Because I know the main option of, I don't know, just let it keep happening for everybody who has to hear it. That doesn't seem like an option, in my opinion. I don't know why we should all have to deal with your dog when, well, deal with your yappy dog. People work from home. People work different schedules in order for you just to have a dog. I don't get that. But I won't have to deal with it much longer because in, uh, in breaking news, my landlord sold this condo, so I will be moving out of here in <clears throat> just under two months. Not exactly hyped about it, but... In that same token, there's a silver lining in that my uncle, the dude who made this coney sauce, 
he's like gonna travel and then go to like his summer cottage for four months so and he lives here and he has a big house with like just himself in it so he's like when the condo sells you i'm gonna be gone you go look at look after my place for five months and then when that time's over then you get a new place etc cetera, etc cetera. live rent free just have no bills I've, i'll have a cell phone bill that's all i'll have for five months straight so in that time i can bank all my do dollars which will be nice because it's money season for me it's summertime um, my seasonal job started my second job so I have my full-time job so I have my full-time wage all that I have YouTube money coming in I have uh, a couple other little sources and I have my seasonal job that also provides quite a bit of money uh, like nice good cash like taxless money and uh, if I play my cards right I could save a nice piece of money and then figure out what I'm gonna do from there It'll be so crazy living. I don't know when the last time I lived or ever in my life, except for when I was like maybe like 17, did I live a life where the only bill I had was like outside of me providing myself food, my only bill all summer is going to be $120 a month on a cell phone. And on that note, why are cell phone plans so expensive? 120 bucks a month? Like what? Why? Just the world we live in, I guess. Oh, you fancy, huh? Arto Life Witcher. Witcher, WTR. All right, well, that was delicious. I hope you guys enjoyed it on your side. Till the next one, you know what to do. Eat good, live well, stay true. Peace.